440 is up next here at Chelmsford. It is the Six Horses Challenge at Bet365 Maiden. It's over five furlongs for three-year-olds and up. We'll start with a look at number one, Fahrenheit 7 for Mark Usher and Tyler Hurd claiming the three pound. Red Hood on in the paddock, a debutant son of showcasing, out of an unraced mare and uh, probably going to be one for another day and handicaps further down the line. Ultimately, you would assume over onto the far side where we picked him up and that I think is number one uh, can't be number one, looks number one uh, it's not two, four, five so it has to be number three who is uh, heading towards us now that is Rebel Empire for Richard Hannon and Ryan Moore and two starts so far and a bit of promise on each of them really just a little bit too far back at Kempton last time out in a race where they didn't go that quick he looks really well nice and relaxed and he's probably the horse to beat in this number two next Johnny Johnson for Rod Millman his horses are going well didn't really fire when last seen at uh, Windsor had run really well prior to that and maybe he was just uh, feeling the effects of a run on really deep ground at Foss Lass on his penultimate start when uh, below form on that final run. He's going to need to improve a little bit on those efforts from last year if Rebel Empire turns up in the same form as uh, he was last time out. But given that the yard are going nicely and he was consistent last year, you'd be giving him uh, a little bit of a chance, you would think. Number four is next. That is Travis for George Bowie and Billy Locknan. First start came at Wolverhampton, beat a couple at a biggish price. Didn't really knock the eye out with one. Uh, it was one that was going to improve in the really short term. And then finally we have number five. That is uh, Kappa Vaticano, Calix Philly, who's 145,000 as a yearling. She's related to a couple of decent enough sprint winners, including Barrington, who was tricky but fairly talented. And Kappa Vaticano... Um, who has taken the prelims fairly well in that red hood comes again from a stable that are in good form.
Yeah, so it's uh, an interesting enough race up next with unexposed horses. Thought that Rebel Empire looked in good form. I liked that run the other day, just a little bit too far back as it went at um, Kempton. The previous run at Lingfield wasn't uh, a bad effort either. Form has been boosted by the runner-up subsequently. But it was a, a better run last time. And I think on that form behind Imperial Guard does look the the horse to beat. It wasn't a bad little race and the pace held up really well. He came from the back of the field and to his credit that he managed to make up a little bit of ground to not be beaten too far. So I think he he does look the way to go for the, the Hannon team in the Midland Park colours. Capo Vaticano, perhaps the one that you would be fearing most if you are with the short price favourite. Only a small field. Could be varying elements of greenness as well. Fahrenheit 7 showing a, a few signs of that in the paddock on his way around as well. He's just shying away from the gates. Going to need a bit of persuasion to go forward. The last one to go in is going to be Rebel Empire in a moment. He's just uh, waiting out the bat. They look to have found a good opportunity for him. Son of Gokken. Um, definitely looks the one to beat. Depends to some extent what potential there is amongst the debutants and Johnny Johnson interesting to see how he gets on for Rod Millman really because I think that might have been an excusable run on his final start and prior to that he was pretty solid whether that level that he was running to on a regular basis is going to be enough to win this I'd question but he might well have improved since last one's going forward they're off five furlongs then for the six horses challenger bet 365 at Maiden Stakes well into stride on her debut, Capo Vaticano will lead from the pink and green of Fahrenheit 7. A little deeper out is Rebel Empire in the light blue. More towards the inside in the darker blue is Travis. At last of the quintet is Johnny Johnson. Out the far corner now, Capo Vaticano and Rob Hornby lead the way by a length and a half. Two in second, Fahrenheit 7 to the outside of Travis. Rebel Empire been nudged along now in fourth place just before the turn towards home. Bat marker is Johnny Johnson. They straighten and out in front, Capo Vaticano making the best of her way home first time up. She has gone clear by a good two to three lengths to Fahrenheit 7. Then came Travis and the outsped Rebel Empire. Johnny Johnson can't pick them up as yet. Capo Vaticano from Fahrenheit 7. The two debutants dominating and it's Capo Vaticano who's going to win first time up. Capo Vaticano from Fahrenheit 7. Then Johnny Johnson, Rebel Empire and Travis last in. Capo Vaticano makes a winning debut for Andrew Balding and Rob Hornby. Daughter of Calix has scored at the first time of asking. 145,000 as a yearling. She's taken a little while to get to the track. She sees off another newcomer, Fahrenheit 7. Back in third is Johnny Johnson. And fourth was Rebel Empire, who ended up with a wide trip and just caught out as much as anything by a drop back to the minimum distance, I think, here. He never really looked that comfortable and he was outpaced from uh, a good way out, was... Rebel Empire, back up in distance into handicaps. We'll see him perhaps in a, a better light. But the winner, who was always up there, has quickened up well to make a, a winning debut. Probably not a piece of form that you can be getting particularly excited about. Only a small field, two debutants that have come to the fore. But um, they'll be delighted with Capo Vaticano, who wins with a little bit of pre-sleeve in our um, three-year-old maiden.